Today's podcast is a tasty treat. I'm talking all about eating in Ireland. Thank you so much for joining me again here on the Traveling in Ireland podcast. Believe it or not, we are almost to the end of my 16, 17, 18, I've kind of lost track, but my multi-week series of planning your Ireland vacation. We have two episodes left. So before I begin with today's episode, I just want to remind you about My Ireland Vacation Planner and Journal. Now, I've been talking about this planner and journal the entire series and how it can help you to plan your vacation beginning to end, front to back. Um, It's laid out, completely follows the steps that I personally use, both when I'm planning my family's vacation as well as the tours that I lead. It has four sections, planning, itinerary, travel tips, and then it has a journal where you can write down notes if you're a journaler or stick in stickers or ticket stubs or draw pictures. It's just a really great way to remember your trip and to keep all of that information all in one place. Now, don't forget that as a podcast listener, you have an exclusive discount. Use code PODCAST10 at checkout and you'll save 10%. And you can find out more about the My Ireland Vacation Planner and Journal at irelandfamilyvacations.com backslash Ireland Planner. So I've saved the best for almost last. And today we are talking about all the tasty tips that you need for eating in Ireland. And I am really excited to jump into this because food, I don't know, food's one of my great joys, right? It's kind of the best way to immerse yourself into a country is to try try all the things. So we're going to talk about so much today. <laughs> um, as always, you know that you can go to the show notes and you will see everything that I mentioned. There'll be super easy links for you to click and more information to go even more in depth into what I'm talking about today. So food, Ireland. When you think about eating in Ireland, you probably think about fish and chips, a really hearty Irish stew, all the potatoes, and maybe a pint of Guinness, and they're so good, (laughs) so, so good. But Irish food goes beyond the typical items that you see on St. Patrick's Day menus in an Irish pub. According to my friend Porgog, who is an Irish food champion, Irish cuisine is simply food made with Irish ingredients. And I know that sounds a little odd. Sometimes you're like, how can Chinese food be Irish? But at the heart of it, if you're using Irish ingredients, it is Irish food. So we're talking, like I said, we're talking about it all today. (laughs) Um, The first thing we're going to kind of go over is the fact that because Ireland is an island, they've been practicing farm to table for a long time, Um, you know, long before it became a phrase of its own. It's just been eating local. So while you're going to find some imported items, really almost everything that you're going to eat, whether you're in um, a restaurant in Dublin or you're in a little pub on the West Coast, most of your food is going to come from just down the road, just right out of the ocean possibly even out of the chef's backyard polytunnel. Irish food is first and foremost fresh and local. So forget what you've thought or heard about bland Irish food. The chefs across Ireland are creating meals that are going to delight all of your senses, your smell, your taste, even the way it looks. Now, Ireland has its traditional foods. And again, these are kind of the things I mentioned at first, the the fish and chips and the Irish stew. But there are a few more that you might want to keep in mind as you're traveling. And these are some foods that you might want to try while you're in Ireland. The first, got to start, you know, start with the beginning. And that's the full Irish breakfast. You'll see it as the full Irish in the Republic, uh, the Ulster fry or the fry up in the north. 
And this is a hearty breakfast that is going to see you through a full morning of tours, and it'll take you easily into the early afternoon as well. The traditional Irish breakfast has eggs, bacon rashers, bangers, black and white pudding, which are sausage slices, uh, sometimes a broiled tomato, fried potatoes or potato cakes. Sometimes you'll have beans, brown bread, toast, maybe soda bread or a pan bread and plenty of strong tea or coffee to wash it down. Ah, oh, it's so good, but I'm going to tell you, you're only gonna eat a couple of those. If you're there for a week and you can eat one of those every day, you are a champion because I've got a couple of those in me and then it's just bits and pieces uh, the rest of the time. Now, a lot of people, um, the scariest thing on that plate for a lot of people is the black pudding also known as the blood sausage. Um, but don't let it put you off because really it's delicious. So my best advice for that, that great Irish breakfast is just try everything, try it just once, maybe try it twice. Because especially with your sausages and your puddings, in different parts of the country, they're made differently. Each butcher has their own recipe. Um, some are more grainy, some are more spiced. So really they're going to taste different all across the country. So maybe try them a couple times, but uh, do take advantage of that full Irish breakfast. It is an amazing meal. Now, the second thing on this traditional foods list is seafood because fishing villages dot the Irish coast all the way around the country. And every time you see a fishing boat go out, you know that they're going to return with a fresh catch, and that's going to be in your local Irish markets and on a restaurant menus later that day. Sligo and Galway are known for their oysters. Dublin Bay prawns, pretty much known worldwide. Smoked Atlantic salmon from the north and the west. You'll find uh, clams being raised in Connemara and mussels on pub menus in every coastal village. Trout, monkfish, cod, you really are not going to, to escape, I guess, the seafood in Ireland. And it's really, it's so spectacular, so, so fresh, and you just can't leave without at least one serving of fish and chips. <laughs> Ireland is known for its use of the potato. Everybody has probably heard at least a little bit about the Great Hunger or the Irish potato famine. And Ireland, I mean, they relied, the people of Ireland relied on the potato. And when that failed back in the mid 1800s, that really, I mean, that caused people to emigrate. And that's why we have so many people across the world now who claim Irish ancestry. You're going to find the potato in so many forms <laughs> and at least once, possibly twice per meal. So you're really going to find potatoes served all the time. You'll find uh, simple mashed potatoes, but usually they're more complex into a colcannon or a champ. And that just means that something has been added to it. In colcannon, it's a chopped cabbage or kale. And in champ, it's the chopped nettle and scallion. Roasted potatoes with breakfast and dinner, you're going to find the potatoes obviously cut into chips, also known as fries for us Americans, or crisps, known as potato chips. <laughs> and you'll bite, find them baked into farls or potato breads and boxty, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And probably one of the top snacks in Ireland is your tato sandwich, and that's just simply your tato crisps inside of soft white bread. <laughs> um, it's a great stat snack, ask, uh, ask any Irishman and they will heartily agree that the tato sandwich is something you must have at least once. Now, boxty, as I said, is a potato pancake. It's yet another way to use a potato that uses both raw shredded potatoes and mashed potatoes. And mostly you're going to find it pan fried and it's served beside meats or stews. Um, I like mine uh, with eggs and sausage at breakfast. And sometimes I even like to heat it up in the afternoon for a snack topped with some beautiful Kerrygold butter and fresh jam. But again, yet another way to use the mighty potato. 
Traditional Irish breads are going to be served with every meal, whether you are having a white soda bread or a wheaten bread, which is, or a brown bread, which is also a soda bread. Irish traditional breads are heavy because they don't use yeast to rise, and they rely on the chemical reaction uh, created when you use the buttermilk and the baking soda, and they get mixed together. So I heartily recommend <laughs> trying as much of the bread as you can. I am a sucker for a really hearty brown bread made with some molasses and and sprinkled with all kinds of terrific grains. But again, try them all. Grab a grab a loaf here or there, have some picnics and enjoy it. Now, one bit of Irish bread that is made to be light and fluffy is the blah. The blah is a floury soft roll and it actually can only be made by certain bakers and only made in Waterford. You can kind of compare it to how true champagne can only come from the Champagne region of France. So the blah is soft and, and light, and if you want it, you have to get it before midday because they will sell out. The bakers who are allowed to make the actual traditional blah, everybody knows where to find them, and they'll be gone. So if you are in Waterford, sink your teeth into a blah. You won't regret it. Ah, oh, yummy. Now, Irish soups and stews. Nothing better on a rainy afternoon or evening when you're sitting in front of a fire, maybe in a pub, listening to just the banter, right? You're going to find uh, Irish stews made with potatoes and root vegetables, lamb, maybe beef, and they're just slow simmered and the, the flavors just mix in together and they're so, so good. Um, the steak and Guinness pie made with beef, obviously stewed with potatoes and carrots and onions and baked in that Guinness gravy with a, a enclosed pastry shell. So yummy. Seafood chowder. So your local seafood, your fresh seafood in a creamy soup. And then you have the Dublin coddle, which is a stew type meal that is filled with chopped sausages and bacon and cooked with potatoes and onion in a beef stock. The next thing I want to talk about is Irish dairy. So Ireland's 40 shades of green really contribute to Irish food production. The sweet grasses make Irish milk some of the best you'll ever taste. And the products that are made from that, the cheeses, the butters, the yogurts, the ice cream, oh, absolutely incredible. So buy local wherever you are in Ireland on those. And that brings us to the local beers, the whiskeys, the ciders all the good stuff, right? Guinness does taste better in Ireland. And if you enjoy a Magners anywhere in the world, know that it's called Bulmers in Ireland, in the Republic. It's Magners in the North. And Jameson obviously is a name everyone knows. But as you're enjoying an evening in the local pub, be sure to ask about regional beverages. Ireland's filled with small breweries, distilleries, and cideries. So try something new that you probably won't be able to find anywhere else. Wow, that seemed like a lot of traditional foods, right? Oh, so many, so many good things. Now I'm gonna move on to the best places to eat in Ireland. And when I say best, I'm actually kind of doing air quotes because I don't know how anyone decides what is best when it comes to dining because everybody has a different palate and preferences. So to say one thing is the best or better than another, I, I just, I'm not willing to say anything like that. So if you ask me what's the best place to eat in Dublin, I'm going to say, well, these are the places I like. These are the places I go and go multiple times because I've had a great experience. So a few of my favorite restaurants in Ireland, I'm going to start with the end in mind, and that is Murphy's Ice Cream. So good. You're going to find Murphy's Ice Cream. It's created in Dingle, but they have shops in Killarney and Dublin, and they'll have pop-ups throughout the country. The last time I was there, there was a little one in Kildare Village. They've had them pop-ups at coastal beaches and things like that. So just watch for the Murphy's Ice Cream Blue, but it is made with in small batches in Dingle, wonderful flavors, and Everything is locally harvested. Like they even harvest the sea salt straight out of the ocean right down there in Dingle. So you'll want to try them all. I eat it every day when I can. 
maybe twice a day if I'm really feeling gluttonous, but don't tell anybody. And my personal favorites are the caramelized brown bread and the honeycomb. Mm, so good. Another of my favorites is Gallagher's Boxy House. Now this is in Dublin. It's in the Temple Bar District, but this is where I go for Boxy, period. End of discussion. They have a Boxy tasting sampler that is absolutely amazing. And it's not the traditional pan fried Boxy, but it has a Boxy bread with a bruschetta, Boxy dumplings, which are insane. I could make a meal out of those and Boxy fries. So anyway, Boxy. Go to Gallagher's in Dublin. Now, the best fish and chips I have ever eaten, hands down, no question, are at Gus O'Connor's Pub in Doolin. I don't know what it is about them, but I found nothing that even comes close. So that's my favorite fish and chips. But again, eat them wherever. Eat them. I've, I've not had bad ones, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Gus O'Connor's just has the best that I've found, in my opinion. Now, staying in Doolin, Anthony's at the Doolin Inn. The way they present your breakfast is so incredible. It's like the last time I was there, they brought out a little tea tray with, it was like breakfast appetizers. I had my breads and a pastry and jams and butters. It was just the most beautiful presentation ever. And their food is so, so good. So Anthony's at the Doolin Inn. Um, have a dinner there if you're staying in Doolin, but definitely have breakfast. Even if you're staying someplace else, go over to Anthony's and get their breakfast. It's incredible. Traveling up the coast to the north, stop in Sligo and go to Hooked or Ila Bon. Now, both of these restaurants are owned by Anthony Gray, who is an exceptional chef and absolutely passionate about local foods and about Sligo. So the foods are, they're innovative. They take inspiration from so many different places. So super, super innovative flavors and menu items, but hyper-local foods. Just go, you will not be disappointed. And then my final recommendation is any Avoca food hall or restaurant wherever they're located in Ireland. Avoca is, it started as a woolen mill, but they have food halls where you can go in, perfect for picnics or restaurants and eat in, but just super fresh, super local, and so, so good. All right, we're moving on to food experiences in Ireland. Now, food tours are probably one of my favorite ways to experience multiple flavors at one time. The tours are led by a guide who not only will take you to terrific restaurants or small food producers, but they'll also share the history, the culture, and some really funny stories as you explore. So a few food tours to try, the Irish food trails in Dublin, the Cork Culinary Tour, the Kinsale Culinary Tour, the Dingle Tasting Tour, the Galway Half Food Tour, and the Taste of Sligo Food Tour. Those are all really terrific tours. You're going to find more around Ireland. So any place that you're going to visit, just do a quick search. Check and see if they have a food tour that you can take. Another really fun thing to do is a baking experience. Because the only thing that's better than sitting down to a freshly baked treat is to bake your own and then sit down and enjoy it. A couple baking experiences that you might like to try. Uh, there's a scone and bread baking experience in Galway, and there's traditional bread making at Tracy's Farmhouse Kitchen in County Down. Another thing you could consider is a cooking course. Now, some of Ireland's top chefs operate accommodations that also provide cookery courses. And a few of those that are pretty well known are Dun Brody House, uh, Kevin Dundon, Bally Malou House, which is Darianna Allen, and Bally Knockin House, which is Catherine Fulvio. But if you want to try something maybe a little more relaxed and that will only take an afternoon, check out Seaweed Foraging and Cooking in County Waterford, a Scary's Market Tour and Cooking Class, and that's just right outside of Dublin, cooking traditional Irish stew in Galway, or there's a woman in County Leitrim that actually does an Irish cooking class on her boat in the Shannon River. 
So those are just some really fun experiences that you might want to check. A lot of regions in Ireland have also created food trails. They're highlighting the food producers and restaurants that really exemplify the taste of the local area. So a few food trails that you might encounter as you're traveling are the Burren Food Trail, and that's in County Clare, it's on the west. A highlight of that one is a private tour and tasting at St. Tola Goat Farm. So if you like goat cheese, you really, really want to do that one. The Sligo Food Trail, again, that's Northwest. Taste Kilkenny, right in the heart of the country. Taste Kerry, part of the Southwest. The Kinmare Food Trail, just right there in Kerry as well. And then Good Food Ireland actually has Irish food from across the country and they have to meet certain standards. So it's a really terrific guide if you're looking for just absolutely the best of the best as ranked by people who know food and not just me, right? And then we have food markets. I love, love, love grocery shopping in Ireland. I think it's an experience that everybody should have, whether you're going in to just grab things for a picnic or you're going to be cooking yourself because you have a self-catering cottage, but it's just so much fun to try the different foods and the flavors. Super fun fact, you're not going to find anything grape flavored in Ireland. You'll find black currant instead. And don't forget to try hot deli offerings at any stores or even, believe it or not, the gas stations like the Apple Greens have really terrific warm food delis. When you're shopping, don't overlook the local butcher shops and the farm stands because that's where you're going to get absolutely the very freshest food available. If you're in Cork, be sure to visit the English market. And if you're in Belfast, do not miss St. George's market, especially on Friday and Saturday when it is a mix of food market and artisan creatives. It's it's just so much fun. It's so loud. There's music, there's food to eat, there's food to buy, there's so many things. It's so terrific. And just a simple tip, if you're sticking to a budget, visiting a food market is the easiest way to eat cheap in Ireland. I'm going to finish these food experiences by talking about afternoon tea. Love afternoon tea. The tradition of afternoon tea obviously began in England, but the Irish have really adopted it and made it their own. And you're going to find um, afternoon tea experiences across Ireland at upscale hotels, but also small tea shops. So just kind of keep your eye open if you're looking for an afternoon tea. Now, some places, most places, do require you to pre-book this so that they can have it prepared for you at a specific time. So keep that in mind as well. One of my favorite experiences is vintage tea trips. Now, this is in Dublin or Cork, and it's afternoon tea served on a vintage double-decker bus as you cruise through the city. So it's kind of a guided tour, but it's more like you're hearing stories from your hosts and enjoying the afternoon tea treats. Just It's so much fun. I highly recommend it. I've done it three times now. And it's just better, better every time. So check that out. Now, I do want to address eating in Ireland with food allergies. Because from my own experience, it's actually really easy and safe to eat in Ireland if you have any food allergies or sensitivities. Ireland has been listing allergen information on their prepackaged foods since 2005. And in 2014, allergen information was added to restaurant menus. And they're very easy to read. On most menus, what you're going to see is the, the name of the, the entree or the appetizer or whatever it is. And then beside it, it's going to list numbers. And those numbers correspond to an allergen guide. And then it tells you what that allergen is. So whether it's gluten or milk or we've seen some that they list celery and eggs mollusks, soybeans. So they're just, they're really detailed and by law they have to be. Now, if you happen to get a menu that lists that things are gluten-free or they are dairy-free, but it doesn't have the full allergen guide, just ask for it. 
because most likely if the information isn't listed, they've got an allergen guide available that you can look at. Remember that smaller restaurants and pubs may change their menu daily based on what's fresh and local. So most meals can be made to order to suit dietary needs. So just ask, it never hurts to ask. And remember that Ireland is a friendly place. People are always happy to help. So when you're in doubt about a meal or an ingredient, again, just ask. And Irish food for picky eaters. Oh. Picky eaters, my girls were really picky eaters when they were younger, but don't worry, they will not go hungry. You are going to find plenty of favorites from the humble French fry or chips on the Irish menus to chicken strips, which will probably be called goujons, hamburgers, pasta, just lots and lots of different things that they're going to be familiar with. So don't worry about your picky eaters going hungry. You will find something for them to eat. but. Don't forget to encourage them to try a few bites of something new. Sometimes just the experience of being in a new place can lead to the openness of trying new things. And while you will find well-known international brands for restaurants in Ireland, when, when possible, opt for something local. Even if you're just substituting Supermax for McDonald's or a local coffee roaster for a Starbucks, why get something that you can get at home? Eat local. Now, if, if all this talk about food kind of has you hungry for some Irish food, don't forget to visit the show notes because at the bottom of the show notes, you're going to find Irish recipes that you can make at home. And these are all recipes that I make that I love and that I, I think they're really, really good. <laughs> so if you are now craving Irish food, number one, I apologize. And number two, pop over to the show notes and find a recipe and maybe make something tonight. If you want to learn more about Irish food, at the very bottom of the show notes, you're going to find links to some podcasts that I've done with mainly chefs, I guess, is what's there. So I've got podcast episode 34 with Chef Jonathan Keane. He is actually at the lodge at Ashford Castle. He's an award-winning chef. I've got episode 36 with my friend Porg Og. I've got episode 66 with Anthony Gray up in Sligo and episode 101 with Tracy at Tracy's Farmhouse Kitchen in Down. So if you would like to hear a few more podcasts about Irish food because you're not hungry enough, go ahead and check those out. So I'm not gonna lie, the whole time I was writing the article for this podcast and then I was editing the podcast, I was thinking about Irish food, and I was tracking down my favorite Irish restaurant that is close to me, and I was also, <laughs> I was checking flight prices for Ireland in February because that's how much I need to go. So I hope that this has left you with a little bit of a craving and that you can't wait to try all the flavors when you get to Ireland. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this podcast, I would really appreciate a five-star review at Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If your podcast player does not let you leave a review, you can visit the Ireland Family Vacations Facebook page and leave a review there. If you're not on Facebook, but you are on Instagram, go ahead and catch a screenshot of this episode pop it into your Instagram stories, be sure to tag me at Ireland Family Vacations, and leave me a couple kind words. I really appreciate it. If you have questions or comments, you can always email me, Jody, J-O-D-Y, at irelandfamilyvacations.com, and I always, always answer. Thank you so much for listening today, and until next time, Slanga Fall.